Hi, I'm Josiah. And I'm Elizabeth. And this is Worth Watching. What do you think the show would be like if it was directed by Michael Bay? I'm pretty sure we both would have been blown up already. Hello and welcome to this episode of Worth Watching. Today we are reviewing Transformers Age of Extinction. So the plot of this movie essentially takes place after all the other Transformers movies after the war with the Decepticons is pretty much over. And rather than focusing on Shia LaBeouf in this movie, you have a character played by Mark Wahlberg who is like this inventor, tinkerer kind of guy. Very, very poor, lives out in Texas with his daughter. And he finds an old truck which happens to be Optimus Prime in disguise and it turns out that the government is looking for all Autobots because they are just sick of these alien robots coming in and destroying everything and they don't care who's the good guys, who's the bad guys, they just want to eliminate all of them and so now that Mark Wahlberg has Optimus Prime, they're coming after Mark Wahlberg, they're coming after Optimus Prime and Mark Wahlberg has to team up with Optimus Prime to face off against a new enemy. So that was supposed to be the plot. Overall, I didn't get any, like, I didn't pick up any parts of the plot, except for the beginning. The beginning was good, yeah. but the rest of it was just too long, boring, I was yawning through this movie. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is, like you said, the movie started off actually pretty strong, where you have Mark Wahlberg, who's a better actor than Shia LaBeouf, and is a really likable guy, like, you should want to root for him when he seems, you have a, a main character who you inherently want to root for, and you have these bad guys who come in and they're really bad and you don't like them and stuff, so you have some good tension set up and an interesting concept, and then it just quickly just spirals downhill to make way for some Michael Bay explosions. And this being a Michael Bay movie, all the actors looked perfectly <laughs> perfect. And actually to an extreme where they all looked like orangely tan. And it was like <laughs> ridiculous. And the one, the girl in the movie, the daughter, yeah. she was supposed, they were supposed to be poor or whatever, but she had like a manicure and like rings. Yeah, she she and looked like, like she stepped off of a Victoria's Secret runway into the yeah. movie. And like um, at the beginning of the movie, Mark Wahlberg's character has sort of this friend slash coworker slash employee who he's working with is supposed to be like this slacker surfer dude. He has like perfect curly blonde hair and this coordinated outfit that looks like the loose casual. You're like, this guy does not look like he's actually lazy. He looks like he's trying to be a model pretending to be lazy. Though, this being a Michael Bay movie, the cinematography also looks really nice. Michael Bay does know, credit where credit is due, how to make anything look just absolutely picture perfectly gorgeous and epic. And no matter what it is, it's a guy standing on a porch and the sky is orange and blue gradient behind him and a shooting star goes by. Like it just, it looks nice. And so the movie is very appealing to watch. Except for there was a crazy, crazy amount of product placement in this movie. Like, and they made it extremely obvious yeah. where th at one point there was a Victoria's Secret truck that took, it was like way too long. It was, it was in the parked middle in the, the middle screen. of the screen and you're just like, as the action is going on behind it. <laughs> and they also, there was one part where they crash into a Bud Light truck and there's Bud Light everywhere and they just stare at it. And then Mark and Wahlberg. Then, yeah, Mark Wahlberg picks it up and drinks it and like, it's, it's so obvious. And there's like, there's a, a random, you know, Chinese person sitting in a car in China watching this Autobot come crashing through this thing in front of them and they turn in slow motion You can read Gucci on the side of their sunglasses. It's like you shouldn't be able to see it But you do there's also like a Tom Ford banner and Pepsi machines and there's so much Product placement in this movie and none of it is done subtly whatsoever completely obvious Another thing that really annoyed me was just what Michael Bay did with some of the characters where like you have um, the main girl's boyfriend character is like the secret boyfriend has been coming to see her even though her daddy doesn't know kind of thing and like you get this feeling that you're supposed to be rooting for him but he's like this super like overconfident jerk guy who like at one point he's talking to Mark Wahlberg and Mark Wahlberg doesn't like him and he's just like he's like just so you know I'm not here to help you save your daughter you're here to help me save my girlfriend and that's supposed to be a line where you're like yeah you go guy and instead I was just like what a jerk! And another thing that Michael Bay does is he has these great actors in the movie. Like, he's got Mark Wahlberg, who's really good. He's got Stanley Tucci, who's great. He's got Kelsey Grammer, all good actors. And he gives them no room to breathe and does weird things with their characters where you can clearly see moments in the film where they're like, well, I guess I'm supposed to say this line now, so I'm gonna do it. And like, Stanley Tucci's character goes about in halfway point in the movie. He starts out as like the main villain of the film and abruptly at the halfway point of the movie just becomes comic relief for the second half of the film and starts just doing wacky, crazy things. And you're just like, why? And the character's reasons for doing things in this movie made absolutely no sense. You're like, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? And it made me very mad at some of the actors. Like, yeah. I was just. One thing I do have to say though, again, credit where credit is due, 
The special effects in this movie are absolutely amazing to watch. The CGI looks like it's right there. And you, to say that about giant robots crashing through stuff is saying something because you completely believe that they are right there and it feels really real and just looks really impressive. Um, you know, I, I look at Michael Bay movies as kind of like a giant fireworks display. You're there to watch the impressive visuals and go, ooh and ah, as things explode, not to really try to get much of a plot out of them. <laughs> so as a whole, what would you rate this movie on a scale of A through F? I'm going to have to give this movie a D. I'm not going to lie, I was bored throughout the movie. <laughs> I really wanted to like it, but I was bored. Yeah, I'm going to give the movie a C, and a low C too, because it was, it was not a good movie. At all. No one's going to, I think, argue that one. But there were moments where I had fun with it. And I have to say, from a technical level, like it was shot well. Again, it was kind of fun at points, but overall, nothing to write home about. Thanks for watching this episode of Worth Watching. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Comment down below on your thoughts of Transformers Age of Extinction. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more. Bye.